What's going on guys, it's Simo, and welcome to a brand new series where I bring to you some of the greatest minds in Yu-Gi-Oh! to discuss a myriad of different subjects ranging from the current metagame, card theory, and anything else we want to cover. So I am more than excited to introduce my first guest for this series, the one, the only, Raphael Nevin, all the way from the Netherlands. Raph, how are you doing, my friend? Hi. <laughs> doing, doing all right. Given the circumstances. Of course, of course. Do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself for those who may not know who you are? Yeah, sure. Um, so my name is Rafael Nevin. I am from the Netherlands to Europe and I've um, been playing this game for like seven, eight years right now. And um, 2019 I went to Worlds and uh, I won two YCSs. It was like my main accomplishment. And I am also part of uh, Duelist Academy and Team Jobber. We're going to go ahead and discuss meta today. I think that's something that's at the forefront of a lot of players' minds. Uh, we're in a bit of a very interesting situation right now. Some people would call the current format that we're in a two-deck format with Adam Antipater and Eldritch being at the top of the tier list. Um, how do you respond to that? Do you feel like we're in that kind of format right now? How do you see things going uh, up until the June ban list? So, like, um, because of the no whole no events, uh, situation and events only being online i feel like the meta is progressing a lot faster than it is with like if we would have been in a normal format because results uh, are, are shared more quickly because we have like stuff like yugi scope everyone can just watch the every, every all the tournaments are being streamed right now so like um information is spreading uh, a lot quicker and um i feel that that's why the the meta is it's like um it's keep, it keeps updating itself faster and yeah, what you mentioned about the two, you're you're uh, talking about at Emancipator and Outlage, uh, I presume. Um, yeah, I definitely feel like those are the most represented decks. Um, but you see as well, like the the, the, the like the pace that those decks are evolving. Like especially Outlage, we started as like a um, a trap deck with like skill drain and stuff. Then um, I think it was at the LCS or the PPG that people started to play the Invoke Engine. Um, uh, with Magician Souls, and now it, it became a full combo deck with the Synchro version. And that's over an incredibly short amount of time that, 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 like, that deck evolved from like three phases, basically, which is because we don't have actual events. Um, yeah, so th those decks are definitely like the most oppressive right now, like, especially because every deck that um, can utilize stuff like. Um, Needle Fiber and then into Link Cross with like addition of Eternity Code. Um, yeah, I feel though, th yeah, those decks are definitely um, the decks to beat. However, I don't think like it's impossible to play any other deck, especially because of every deck that can actually just play uh, Needle Fire, Link Cross, or Roar Dawn can play that entire Synchro combo package. Like Eldritch is just a, uh, a, a one of the many combinations you can make because as soon as you have because you don't even really need uh, any bricks extra in your deck. It's just like, do you have the extra deck space? If you have the extra yeah. deck space, your deck can play it. Like, Absolutely. Uh, one of my friends, Luke, became a deck doctor at the uh, Duelist Academy, and uh, one of his decks was Blackwing. And what, what, well, of course, the main deck of Blackwing is just not very impressive, but sure. he could incorporate the combo stuff that all of those other decks are playing. And that's the same for Eldritch and any other deck. Like, if you, if you have the extra deck space, you can do such insane things right now. Um, so I, I think any deck is just really able to at least going first win. Like you have Dino, you have Murmill, like Diva on itself is two discards with four negates, like Epilosa and Toad and stuff. So like going first, um, yeah, it's really a combo heavy, heavy format for sure. I think what's so interesting about that package specifically, the Halle Fibrax, Linkross, Auroradon uh, most notably, is that it doesn't necessarily force you into any specific deck, right? It allows you to, if you have the extra deck space, I mean, you have a card like Auroradon, which precludes you from Link Summoning after the fact, but by that point, it really doesn't matter, and so many decks that don't care about the extra deck can just throw this package in, and then they just have this deck, uh, this this insane combo of multiple negations, of uh, just being able to draw absurd amounts of cards. You know, I mean, you mentioned Eldritch, right? Eldritch has gone under numerous evolutions at this point. It started just like pure Eldritch, which is already strong enough, right? That was already one of the top contenders as of last month. Then we had Invoked Eldritch, which was even better. There was like 
like also like light sworn eldritch for a time i suppose as well and then now we're on like full on combo eldritch i think one of the most uh dividing uh parts when it comes to the deck specifically is that because it's this control deck that has this combo element to it it can be very difficult to side deck for you know do you side deck for like the combo half of the deck but then like the eldritch cards can do their thing or vice versa how do you feel that uh navigating that is uh the correct way to go yeah, so like, uh, especially against Aldage, that's, that's, a, that's a bit weird for like side decking, but I think you should probably focus on the combo aspect because that sure. is the most dangerous uh, thing. And I think we will see that in, in like, if we see the meta progress, that um, we will go to a uh, more hand trap heavy format, both in the main deck and the side decks. Um, and that is probably because of like, the, the, also the, not only just the decks like Elgic will evolve but like we'll see, we just see right now we see the the standard combo with all of those powerful links and synchros is also evolving because we see like the garden uh, made rose uh, rose maiden stuff into true king of all calamities and especially that combo <laughs> that's also so special really um, for, yeah, like it, it, it gives you like um, a really big like problem for side decking because the first and obvious choice would have been Dark Rune no more. Even like uh, an Emancipator was even main decking, it, I think, in the LCS. Yeah. But mm -hmm. if people start transitioning to like the the, the VFD True King Cal Calamities combo, that means that uh, having your Dark Ruler no more is not even a reliable out anymore. Yeah. Because they will just do it in the standby phase. So the only thing you can do at that point is play like a lot of hand traps and hope you draw at least two to stop their turn. And then do your own combo because the combos are usually done with one card, like Jet Synchron right. is everything on its own. So it's just really uh, uh, a matter of drawing enough different hand trips and stopping the turn. So I think we will see like a transition to like decks. I think the L deck Synchro deck is already playing nine or 12 hand traps. Yeah. And uh, that is probably the only way to go. It kind of feels like Goki in 2018 when we right. everyone was just playing loads of hand traps. Um, and then trying to stop that turn to like do the same thing in your turn. Um, yeah. I think it's kind of going there. And um, for side decking, like you probably need to go to like more impactful hand traps. Like we saw already the Gizmak Uka with the the barrier statue. That is one right. of those impactful like because like even if you imperm um, the Synchro Eldritch deck or even an Emancipate or Ash or something. If they have the extender, they can probably still go play. So you need really impactful hand traps. Now the Gizmek Uka, when it was uh, like it had a surprise factor, isn't incredibly powerful. But if you talk to uh, just about an, uh, an Emancipator, most of the time they can do the the, the needle fiber stuff right. after they already um, get a negate on board, or if they even hit a Guardian of one of their. Um, you know, an emancipator effects. Right. Excavation, that's the word I was looking for. So, <laughs> and at that point, the Gizmek is just going to be negated. So, sure. um, I th yeah, one of the impactful hands of like Gamma is probably going to be seeing more play, even though it requires you to play the brick. I think those more high risk, high reward hand traps are just going to be like the norm, just because people will probably transition to the, the Calamities combo, which means Dark Ruler and like the standard side cards are just going to be obsolete. Um, it's not a format I'm looking forward to, if I'm honest. Yeah, anyway. it's 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 definitely going in a direction that a lot of people seem to be yeah. uh, dreading, for sure. Uh, let's not forget Ad Emancipator, though. Uh, Eldritch has definitely gone, undergone a lot of evolution, but Ad Emancipator, it's... It's not really that the deck itself has changed so much, but more so the combos have been refined, just as you mentioned earlier with the fact that with Gizmek Uka uh, making an appearance, Adam Antipater's just figured, oh, we just have to change the combo, make a way yeah. to stop Uka first, and then we can just do everything under that protection so that way Needle Fiber can resolve. But Adam Antipater is still a very strong deck and a very prominent threat, very explosive, but you know, because it's this very heavy combo deck, it kind of lacks that uh, resilience going second, being able to play these hand traps like the combo Eldritch deck can, where that deck can kind of go first or second and feel like relatively okay about it. How do you feel about Ad Emancipator? So like, uh, even though the transition wasn't as clear as for Eldritch, they also like changed because at the first LCS we saw that everyone played the a heavy Go 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 engine and like the, the and like the spells that searches them as well. And now we see them transition to like uh, most of the decks have caught the, the engine because the spells uh, aren't very good and. Um, 
but that also means you have less rocks in your deck so it's like it's kind of weird because you, ro right. you want to have three rocks every time you excavate sure um yeah like like i already like said about the guka like um they do have a lot of ways to go into their combos and play around hand traps which is a really good thing about the deck and like even though the the competition got stronger quote unquote like every, like because every deck is a combo deck now uh going first like adam is still super degenerate like don't get me wrong like <laughs> that combo didn't get any weaker or something um and i also feel like dark ruler isn't as much of a threat against that because you also just need to like if you can't you can't kill them because of dark ruler which means that you not only have to clear everything but also like make sure they don't come back because of block dragon right because they will end on the block dragon on the fields and if you get rid of it there's three searches and the next turn they have a free summon instantly so you, you right. basically need to clear the field and also dweller them which is just not easy with five cards and so, sometimes they're under buster lock as well yeah like there are a lot of extra <laughs> factors factors that, that weigh in how hard it is to crack the board so sure um that that again like yeah so yeah no, i think the Prey is just still like an insanely impressive deck uh, mostly because of block dragon that leads us into the next question so when you look at both of these decks in particular uh we do have a ban list coming up here in a few weeks supposedly we'll have to see if uh, we do end up getting one because you know yeah, with... i'm wondering if you're getting one <laughs> yeah well we didn't yeah. think we were going to get an april one and we did so i don't know maybe we yeah. will we'll see but Nanny, let's assume that we do uh, you look at Adam Antipater, you look at Eldritch, what do you feel are the main oppressors here in terms of like what needs to be addressed on this upcoming list? Yeah, so I think everyone agrees on that Block Dragon is the most oppressive <laughs> card in the format right now and yeah. uh, should not be at one or two or three. <laughs> uh, that deck, yeah, I mean, that card is just probably too ridiculous. Um, I don't think it will kill Adam Antipater at all if it gets, but it will hurt. For sure in the Eldritch. So like I don't think of the Eldritch engine any card is particularly unfair or something. I don't think any right. I don't expect any hits at all. Like Lord is not going to two or three or, or to one or something. Agree. I don't but um I also don't think they will hit like Aurora Dawn or Link Cross. But I mean what what I would have if you wanna fix this, like that every deck can play an insane combo, it starts with needle fiber and it ends with needle fiber. If they Right. They take uh, our Halky Fiber. If they take it out, then um, all of that is solved. I don't know if they will, because it would it would mean we have never played an event or YCS with Needle Fiber, which is it's quite weird. It uh, is. Think about like the time we spend waiting for it. Uh, I'm not sure if they will. I'm not even sure there will be a list because we just don't have events. I don't see the point. But um, yeah, if if they want to fix. That I think that is the most obvious uh, because it's kind of is problematic that every deck you, you can think of can just play uh, an insane draw to BFD combo like all just because of needle fiber. Right. Um, so I also it's not a it's not a solution to hit like jet synchron because there are way too many like jet synchrons. They're just like a bit worse. So you have like a lion and you have like the death spots and can go on and on, you know. So, of course. Uh, yeah. yeah, so like hitting the, the tuners is probably not the, the option. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I would so agree. So, those 100%. are like the two parts I think are, are like bannable for sure. I don't think they will hit Link, Link Cross. Link Cross is insane, like, don't get me wrong, yeah. but it's ins oh, it's mostly insane because of uh, Needle Fire, which is like otherwise just a good card, which is fair. Yeah. All the problems um, just circulate around Needle Fiber, it seems. It's very yeah, reminiscent of, like, Firewall yeah. Dragon, right? It's like you could ban all the cards around Firewall Dragon, but Firewall Dragon's yeah. still an absurd Yu-Gi-Oh card. Yeah, you, you can ban, like, Cannon Soldier, but, like, there will be other FTKs if you keep exactly. firing. So, like, those two are the only cards I feel like are, are like, 100% hands-down bannable. If it will happen, I'm, I'm very skeptical on it. Also because you just don't have events, but... um. Right. Yeah, those are the only cards I, I think are going. So the last question I want to ask you before we wrap things up here is if you were playing a non-Eldritch, non-Adamancipator deck going to this format, which you can, like you mentioned at the beginning of the video, it's not like you have to play one or the other to compete. We've seen through the LCSs, um, through the PPTs, through every all the online tournaments that we've had, that there are still decks that are topping that aren't Eldritch or Adamancipator. Uh, what you know deck or decks would you feel confident going into those events playing? Um, I think, so there are two decks I really like right now, it's either Dino, which is just, both going first and second is really insane, 
And uh, it's still one of those decks that like, I'm kind of feel comp confident playing Dark Ruler in, just because like the main engine can get rid of the, the Buster Lock, because like you can just go Pills, Tyreno, and um, that's not really the issue you're losing to. Right. Um, and going first, you have the, yeah, you have insane combos going to Tolga, VFD, do the entire combo that everyone else is doing. Uh, you have Garden Rose, Main and Link Cross, etc. So like it does a lot of good stuff going first and second, and I really like that. And um, <laughs> I, people hate me for it, but I really like Salamangre. It can play a lot of Antra. <laughs> Um, it can. I've, I've been I've been spouting that too. People think yeah, I'm crazy, I, I, but that I, deck is. Yeah, we'll, we'll take it to an event right now, but like. Right. I like to play it on the B a bit. Um, it's very. Ad it has that new um, that new Parallax seat, which is just like it's it's a free dweller, and uh, Luke Luke just like sent me this uh, one card uh, OTK with free pops yeah. with access code. I really like. I think that deck's kind of cool, but everyone keeps hating me for like saying Gazelle is a cool card. <laughs> it can at least but contend, friends, right? Yeah, keep making fun of me for this, but uh, <laughs> no, but like, I think like Dino and like, there are a lot of like Dino-esque decks, like Mermil uh, and like other decks that can just do like insane combos, and all of those decks can win, like you just have to go first a lot of times, and you just right. do the mo the same degenerate shit as Adam and Spader and um, of course. and Eldritch, basically. So, <laughs> Yeah, no, like that, that's that's really the form we're living in right now. It's just like yeah. all of every deck is a combo deck. You want it to be, but just like it's is a positive thing or a negative thing depending on your own like opinion. But yeah, that's the reality right now. Yeah, I, I don't think main deck Dark Ruler, and not even that, the fact that Dark Ruler has proven to be ineffective against combo decks, I don't exactly yeah. feel like that's a sign of a healthy format, but that's just my opinion. Well, yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> but, yeah, but that's, that's, that's actually a card that could be banned uh, to make all the other stuff less degenerate. True, uh, True King Calamity is probably a card that, that if you want to say, like, you, keep, you take out one card of, of all of the combo pieces, that's probably the one you take out just to make it less degenerate and then all the decks could still make their entire field and stuff but it's not something that is so hard to combat even by right. sighting because you need to prevent it from being summoned and like all the other stuff is still really degenerate but, but you can at least do something while it's still on the field for sure uh, absolutely for, for six cards yeah yeah so i, would, awesome. I, would, I, would, I hope they ban that as well yeah, <laughs> I think a lot of people would agree with that sentiment. But Raph, thank you so much for taking the time and joining me for this uh, new series that we're going to be kicking off. Do you want to go ahead and promote yourself and uh, anyone else? Oh, yeah. Well, check out uh, uh, Team Jobber's Facebook page. That's uh, that's cool. I already mentioned Jewelers Academy. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that's all. Awesome. Thank you so much, so much again for your time. Guys, let me know down in the comments what you guys think of this new series. If you enjoyed hearing Raph's insights, I know a lot of you do like to hear it from the players themselves. And that's why I want to go ahead and just give them a platform so that they can speak and bring you guys their insights to help make everyone a better player. Thank you guys so much for watching the video and we'll see you next time.